First Chronicles chapter 11, verse 10. We'll be going back and forth between 2 Samuel 23. And we're looking at David's mighty man. These also are the chief of the mighty men whom David had, who strengthened themselves with him in his kingdom and all with Israel. So here, these mighty men, they represent Israel. They re represent the king, David, and all that to be. Now, I don't know if all these men are, worship the Lord God of David, but many will do. So it would be a, a, a force of men military under God, Jehovah, under the king, David, and of the land of Israel. According to the word of the Lord concerning Israel. And this is the number of the mighty men whom David had. Now, there's a long list of numbers here. There's a long list of names. We're going to look at some of them, but not all of them. And there's apparent contradictions. And one of the things we need to realize is a person could have more than one name. There are some names that appear multiple times of multiple people in the Bible. And then sometimes, you know, you just got to read very carefully. We're not, we're not going to compare exactly Samuel 20, 2 Samuel 23 and 1 Chronicles 11, because we're not going to look at those contradictions, because there are none. And if it's a contradiction we can't explain, then we haven't been shown yet. But God doesn't contradict. And we're not going to go into that mode. Uh, we're going to read, and we're going to study. In verse 11, and this is the number of the mighty men whom David had. Jashahobim and Hakshimanite, the chief of the captains. So he's over the captains. He lifted up his spear against 300 slain by him at one time. Well, that's a pretty good battle. In one battle at one time, he kills 300 with a spear. He gets the title of chief. These men get their positions. They get their authority. They get their rank because of the work they did, not because of who they know. Now, the very easy thing is, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Not with these soldiers. We read last night that uh, Jerob, Joab, he gets the title of the entire captain of, of the military force because he went into Jebus and conquered Jebus. These men, some of their stories are recorded on why they are who they are. And it's because they proved themselves. And 12. And after him was Eliezer. Now there's a lot of Eliezer's in the Bible. All the way back to Abraham's servant. The son of Dodo. Okay, well that makes it more clear. Son of Dodo. The Ahohite, who was one of the three mighties. Now that's the first place mighty shows up, and it only shows up here in chapter 11, verse 24. So this word is the only place it shows up is in First Chronicles 11, mighties. He was with David at Pasadamim, and there the Philistines, they were a constant threat to King Saul and David, were gathered together to battle, where was a parcel of ground full of barley. And the people fled before the Philistines. All right, here's a battle. The battlefield is this barley field. You find that in the book of Ruth, a barley and wheat. And in the tent that the Philistines have come, the nation of Israel has run. They fled. And they set themselves in the midst of the parcel of the field. This is David and the mighties. A midst of the parcel and delivered it and slew the Philistines. And the Lord saved them by a great deliverance. So here's the Lord working in this battle in a field of beans. That it was not worthy of anybody else who ran, but David and his mighty, they stood the ground and they fought and they prayed to God and they sought God and God gave them the victory. So here's a 
man, David, and his one of his men, he seeks God. They pray to God. They won for with God's victory. You're one of my chief men. I wonder how many chief men of our military forces in America today would give God the honor with a King James Bible praying that saved and allowed to witness to others. Right. Verse 15 is a paragraph mark. Now three of the 30 captains, so there's 30 captains, three of them, went down to the rock to, to David, into the cave, cave of Adullam. Let's take 1 Samuel 22.1. 1 Samuel 22.1. Let's see what we're looking at, where we're at. 1 Samuel 22, 1. Scripture with Scripture. 22, 1. 1 Samuel. David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Dullam. There we are. And when his brethren and his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. So here's a place that is known. It's in the area of David's parents. And his brethren. That when David goes to his place, his brethren, his father's brethren, come to him and visit him. So it's near, because it's important, because we're going to come up with, with Bethlehem. It's near Bethlehem. And the host of the Philistines encamped in the valley of Riphna, or Riphaim. 2 Samuel 23 13. 2 Samuel 23. 13. 2 Samuel 23, 13. Again, this is David's mighty man. Keep your place here because we'll be back to this one multiple times. But in verse 13, and three of them, three of the, yeah. Three of the 30 chief went down and came to David in the harvest time. Okay, we didn't learn that. Harvest time. It dates. Of the cave of the Dolom. And the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Rephnim. That's where we were just were. Now, this is what we're going to read. We're going to read further. But we're going to read this again. And David was then in the hold. And the garrison, that is the military troops, their supplies of the Philistines, was then in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me a drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate, a Pacific well. This is where David grew up, and oh, that, that, that well that he remembers. It may have had a water taste or crispiness or something. Of all the wells, that one that's by the gate. And the three mighty men break through the holes to the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate. So not only did they go into Bethlehem, uh, well, well, this well is closer. I don't know. I'm just saying. No, David said a Pacific well. And took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out onto the Lord. And we're not going to read that part in Chronicles. But here Samuel says, Lord, this is yours. He is giving a drink offering to God. That this water that he asked his troops, kind of, sort of, that they went in and gave up their lives for that water. And he said, be far from me, O Lord, Jehovah, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of the men that went in jeopardy? That's the first time that word shows up, jeopardy. Of their lives, therefore, he would not drink it. These things did these three mighty men. And back to over Chronicles. So what David said, and you would think, well, one of these men get upset. He did not drink the water. He says those men could have died. It was not a military campaign to get that water. If they would have died, that would have been blood murder. And Lord, for their actions, I give this water to you. So in other words, it's almost like David's giving blood to God. And these men didn't get upset. I would think that they didn't get upset because they loved the king. They honored the king. And maybe honored God and would be like, well, look at that. 
our David loves the Lord so much that that water, <clears throat> instead of drinking himself, man, we're, he gave it to God. Now we'll pick up in verse 15 for, in Chronicles 11. Now three of these 30 captains went down to the rock to, to David under the cave of Adullam. And we saw that this is where David's family came. So we're in the area of Bethlehem. And the host of Philistines encamped in the valley of Ripham. And David was yeah, and David was then in the hold. And the Philistine garrison was then at Bethlehem. All right, let's go 1 Samuel 16 to 4. 1 Samuel 16, 4. Chronicles is not so boring. 1 Chronicles 16, 4. Look at a couple of verses here. Let's see where we're at in Bethlehem. Saul just, I mean, yeah, King Saul just despised the word of God. And God said Samuel to go anoint David. We looked at this last night. And chapter 16, verse 4, it says, And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Come thou peacefully. I mean, he just hacked, he just hacked the king of uh, Elimelech in pieces. And down verse, same chapter, chapter 16, and verse number 7. Oh, verse number 6. Nope. Verse 5. Excuse me. Verse 5. He said, Peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord's sanctify yourselves. Come with me to sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons, that's David's father, and called them to sacrifice. And David is anointed amidst his brethren, verse 13. This is all done in Bethlehem. This is the city of David. Was born, his childhood, where he was a shepherd. And he's in the field. He's outside of Bethlehem. And he's sitting there with his troops. And he's thinking, oh, there's my city. If I could just only have... He didn't give them the order. He just was thinking, oh, if I could just have water that well. And his men went in on their own. Verse 16, David was... Uh, chapter 11, verse 16. And David was then in the hold, and the Philistine garrison was then at Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me a drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem that is, that is at the gate. And the three break through the host of the Philistines, a military garrison. This is where the troops are. This is where the supplies are. This is not like an outpost, you know, you can sneak in. They're going in the midst of the battle of the enemy. And drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate. And took it and brought it to David. But David would not drink of it, but he poured it out to the Lord. And said, My God forbid it me that I should do this thing. Shall I drink the blood of these men that had put their lives in jeopardy? I mean, if they would have died, it was not battle. There was no war. And David would take it. If these men died, I would have been a murderer. For with their jeopardy of their lives, they break. They brought it. Therefore, he would not drink it. These things did. Did the did, these things did these three mites? That's the only time that word shows up. It doesn't mean. I mean, it says poured it out, but it doesn't give the full detail as Samuel gave. Man, Lord God, this, I'm not worthy. All right, another paragraph, verse 20. So those three of the three mighty men, just for a drink of water, get their own paragraph, and they are given by David as a thank you, a charge. Of the 30 captains, these are the three of the three, 30 captains. And Abishai... The brother of Joab. Now there's Joab's name. Joab is not mis listed in the mighty men of David. 
You say, well, there he is. Yeah, but it's not personal. It's not alone. He, Joab is mentioned as the brother of, but it's not ever mentioned Joab. Joab is mentioned in verses 4 through 9, but we're not talking about the mighty men. That comes in verse 10. Joab became a murderer twice in non-combat, non-war. And then he usurps the authority over David with one of David's sons that was not Solomon. He is removed from the mighty list, although he is mighty. So here he is, a brother of Abishai. So Abishai, his brother, is mentioned. He was the chief of the three, Abishai, for lifting, that's the first time that word shows up, lifting, up his spear against 300, he slew them and had a name among the three. But look at verse 11. Here's a guy that did 300 by one attack. Excuse me. Here is Abishai. He did 300, but it, you know it's accumulated with a spear. That's aggressive warfare. Verse 21. Of the three, he was more honorable than the two, for he was their captain. So Abishai was also a captain. He was a captain, howbeit he attended not to the first three. Who's that? The three that went in and got that water. <laughs> Next guy. Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man. So Jehoiada was a valiant man. His son, Benaiah, of Kebzeel, who had done many acts, he slew two lion-like men of Moab. I mean, the Holy Spirit said, Here, here's some men of Moab, two of them. And they looked like they were lions. In other words, if you were to see these guys crossing the street at night, you would cross the other side of the road and avoid these, these two guys. They were mean-looking, lions. Probably a facial hair, like a lion. Just, rawr, get away from me. And this man, Benaiah, two lion like a Moab, he conquers them. He slew them. Also, he went down and slew a lion in a pit of a snowy day. That's the only time snowy shows up in the Bible. Now, let's look at 2 Samuel 23, 20. Let's look at this guy in the list of 23, verse 20, for 2 Samuel. And you just get another reading for Scripture of Scripture. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabzeo, who had done many acts, slew two lion-like men of Moab. There's the first time, and only with First Chronicles 11, lion-like. That's one word. It's only two places. First time is here in 2 Samuel. The other place, place is in 1 Chronicles we just read. Two lion-like men of Moab. I don't even know that's really lion-like. I don't even know that's even a word, but there it is. He went down also and slew a lion in the midst of a pit in time of snow. So 2 Samuel, I just want to look at it's when it snows in the, in the Palestine area. Chronicles gives us a more detail. It was a snowy day with Samuel. It was a snowy day in the snowy season. <laughs> it's a little more detail. Some people might see it as a problem. There's no problem. In winter up north, you get snow. You may be getting snow today. <laughs> you know? 23. Verse 23 of 1 Chronicles 11. And we're still talking about Benaiah, verse 23. Two lion-like men of Moab, he, sl he slays a lion, and he slew an Egyptian, a man of great stature, five cubits high. That would be approximately seven feet and a half foot. Seven and a half foot, excuse me. First Samuel 17, 4, Goliath was nine feet tall. Let's look at that, First Samuel 17, 4 or 9. 
1 Samuel 17. So Goliath was a little taller than this guy. But still, by a couple foot. 1 Samuel 17. Verse 4. It said there, there went out a, a champion. This first time that word shows up. Out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath. Here's the first time his name shows up. Of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. That's approximately nine foot, nine inches, approximately. And I'm using, you know, from the elbow to the forefinger. But there were different measures between the elbow and the forefinger. So that's six cubits. This guy over here in, in Chronicles... This guy over here in Chronicles is five cubics. Goliath was six cubics. So one cubit off. All right, so he slew Egyptian, a man of great stature, five cubics high, and in the Egyptian hand was a spear. Ooh, there's a lot of spears. In this chapter, in this chapter, King Saul had a spear, and he was aiming at anybody and everybody he got angry with. He had it was a spear like a weaver's beam, and I can't find what that looks like. I've tried and tried and tried. And he went down to meet, and he went down to him in a, he went down to him with a staff. That's the kind of staff the shepherds have. And plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand. That staff is not really a weapon. So he grabs the Egyptian spear and slew him with his own spear. <laughs> hey, yeah, boom, and kills him. And it would be funny, I, you know, I think a little off of the Bible. Well, it would be funny if that Egyptian spear had his name on it. And they find him dead and his spear is sticking out of him and said, you know, this is, <laughs> I've been killed by my own spear. <laughs> These things did Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and had the name among the three mighties. Man, if you could do all that, you're a warrior. These things did Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and had the name among the three mighties. Behold, he was honorable among the thirty, but attained not to the first three that David set him over the, over the guard. So Benaiah is in charge of the guard. He's given authority because he has proved himself to be authoritative. Also, the valiant men of the armies were. Valiant is somebody, Asherhill, the brother of Joab. Now he is killed in battle. Ahilam, uh, the son of Dodo of Bethlehem. So he's of Bethlehem. Maybe he knew David and grew up with David. I don't, doesn't say, but of Bethlehem. Shema the Harite, Helez the Pedonite, Ira the son of Ikish the Tikonite, Abai Yezer the Antithite, Sivakai the Hushethite, Aileia the Holahite, Maharari the Nethopathite, he led the son of Benaiah, the Nethavite, Isaiah, the son of Ribai of Gibeah, that pertains to the children of Benjamin. All right? That would be Saul's group of people. Saul, King Saul was of Benjamin. Benaiah, the Parathonite, Hurari of the brooks of Gaash, Abiel, the Abathite, Ezimavith, the Bath Harmonite, El Haiba, the Shalabite, the sons of Hashim, the Gibbonite. So, this one, the sons, they're not given, but there's plural. Jonathan, the son of Sag, the Hararite. Ahayam, the son of Sekar, the Hararite. El Fathai, the son of Ur. Hefer, the Mechorite. Azijah, the Pilate, Herzog, the Carmenite, Mount Carmel, Narai, the son of 
Elsbile, Joel, oh, I like that name, the brother of Nathan, I like that name, Bibhar, the son of Haggai, Zelik, the Ammonite, Ammonite is the children of Lot, Naharai, the Berthite, the, the armor bearer of Joab. See, there's Joab again, but he's not listed. The brother of Joab, the armor bearer of Joab, but not Joab, the sons of Zuriah, that's David's si sister. No, that's David's aunt. Ira, the Itharite, Garib, the Atharite, Uriah, the Hittite, there's Bathsheba's husband. But let's look at over here, 2 Samuel 23:39. Let's look at something else that could be a problem with this list, and it's not really a problem. Come to 2 Samuel 23:39. Uriah the Hittite. He's the last one mentioned in Samuel. It's not the proper order between the two books. Why is Uriah the last one in Samuel and almost near the end of Chronicles? I don't know, but that could be a problem with some people. And then we're given the number, the number that we're not given. Funny how Chronicles does not give you 30 and 7 and all. <laughs> Chronicles, Chronicles, you know, the, the record. We read Uriah the Hittite 30 and 7 and all. So every time David would read this list, guess who his name he would come across every time? Uriah, verse 41. Zabad, the son of Ahalai, Adina, the son of Shisha, the Reubenite, the captain of the Reubenites, and 30 with him. What? Look at that. Look at the tribe. Benjamin, Reubenites, Hannah, the son of Makah, and Josephat, the, the Methanite, Isaiah, the Ashethite, Shammah, and Jehiel, the sons of Hathan, the Ararite, Jadiel, the son of Shimrai, and Jaha, his brother, the Tizrite, Ail, the Mahathite, and Javod, and Joshua, the sons of Elnam, and Ephmath, the Moabite, there's Moab, that's where David's grandmother, Ruth, came from. Elam and Obed. Now, David has a grandpa named Obed, but that's not the one. And Jaziel the Meshulabite. And I don't think any of these men would be left on the streets homeless after their duty and service. These men became the great men of David's army, but this is not the entire army. There are names that are left out. But that does not make them less important because all these men can't do anything without the full tally of all the soldiers of David in Israel. But these are the ones that they done something. They are something. Uriah followed the orders, not even know that those orders were to kill him. And the orders of Uriah was go up into that city and attack it, even though they're going to attack you. Now that took faith. That took courage. That someone says, I'm going to obey an order to death. So there we have the list.